टाइम Good morning you're watching all you need to know on Bloomberg Quint I'm Darshan Mehta joining me on the show is Agam Vakil Agam will speak about the FNOQs I'll talk about the general trade setup which looks decent at this point of time Asian markets are doing well the SEX 50 no doubt has come off the highs of the day but still trading with a positive bias just managing to come in below the 10500 mark in trade now what happened as far as the ADRs are concerned the IT stocks did extremely well Infosys was up 4% uh, Wipro was up almost half a percent ICICI said Mang did manage to rally but the other counters traded rather weak in trade vedanta was the biggest drag uh, of down by almost 2.5% and dr reddy's was down almost 1% now what happened as far as crude is concerned two days of stable move on the crude but nevertheless uh, brent crude is coming in close to the 72 dollar barrel per mark and wti is coming in close to the 67 dollar barrel per mark what happened on the lme yesterday big sell off apart from aluminium if you're looking at it aluminium was up almost uh, 3% the strong traction continues in china but look at the sell off copper was down 1.5% zinc was down 5% nickel was down on 1% lead was down 3.5% while tin was down half a percent that continues in china because copper and zinc are seeing selling pressure but look at aluminum aluminum has still managed to inch up almost 2% in a weak uh, commodity market in china currently most of the precious metals are trading with a positive bias fund flows fis were net buys in trade yesterday uh, they bought in 369 crores di is sold in almost 600 crores in the cash market now if you're looking at which were the sectors in focus the nifty bank managed to inch in higher it was up 100 points the selling was seen in the mid cap and small cap space in trade yesterday which were the sectors that didn't do well the nifty metal and the nifty real estate index were down in trade the psu banking index was rather weak in trade now if you're looking at the weeks the weeks also came managed to cool off by 1% given the fact that the market was extremely rain bound the nifty was up 40 points IT was the one that contributed maximum Infosys TCS and uh, HCL Tech but agam what are the FNOQs indicating and any word on IT Absolutely Dashan uh, Infosys along with the IT pack will be in focus today even in the futures and options space considering we have seen so much traction there but starting off with the nifty we've seen a little bit of an increase in open interest and is the same for the nifty bank as well considering the fact that we've seen uh, a uh, you know an increase in the underlying we are looking at longs building up to a certain extent in both these indices but when it comes to the india wicks well not too much has changed around the mark of 14.5 and it's the same for the nifty put call ratio at around 1.53 uh what we've also seen is a continuation of a trend that we've seen over the previous couple of days that is more build up in the 10300 and the 400 puts uh this also means that there's base formation around the 10300 put as we have been indicating over the past few days we have another entrant in the fno band that is irb infra but there'll be two stocks that I'll be watching out for where we have seen fresh longs coming in that one's TCS from the large cap IT space and from the mid cap IT space we have something like an NIT technologies which continues to go from strength to strength and sees a lot of accumulation towards open interest in fresh longs that said let's now go across to bloomberg's paul allen who's standing by with all the big headlines from across the globe President Trump says the US may rejoin the Trans-Pacific Partnership in the light of progress on what he calls unfair trade deals. And a week after threatening 100 billion dollars of additional tariffs on China, he says the two sides may end up levying no new duties on each other. The president withdrew from the TPP in his first week in office. It was negotiated under his predecessor but never approved by Congress. US Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross has told the Summit of the Americas that his country will not give away its leadership in the region. He also said that corruption cannot be tolerated and that nations must create enforcement mechanisms to fight graft. On trade, Ross said tariff barriers in Latin America are unnecessarily severe, but the US intends to work with other nations to simplify the system. A new survey says the mood is darkening among the US retail investors. The American Association of Individual Investors says is the gap between those claiming to be positive and those with a bearish outlook has had its widest since February last year. The U-turn from a bullish peak in January is blamed on trade war concerns, escalating tensions in the Middle East and the fractious political landscape in Washington. 
Facebook is reportedly not anticipating major changes to its overall revenue and business model after CEO Mark Zuckerberg's testimony to Congress. The Wall Street Journal cites marketing vice president Carolyn Everson saying the most, that most users have not changed their privacy settings in the past four weeks. After his grilling on Capitol Hill, Zuckerberg's been invited to face three EU committees. I think it's a wake-up call not only to Facebook but also other tech companies that consumer privacy matters, consumer empowerment is important. If you put the consumer first, you might not have to spend 10 hours in a, in a hearing in the House and, and in the Senate. Um, look, we, we want to protect the consumer. We want them to be able to better manage the tools, have access to the tools so they can make the decisions. Um, and it's a lot better if the, if the companies that are such an incredible part of America's innovation, all these communications, fix their problems themselves. And I think the wake-up call is they should have acted sooner. They now know that. Global News, 24 hours a day, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. Uh, there's an old uh, uh, saying uh, in China about uh, in, in any conflict, know your enemy and study him carefully. And they've been thinking exactly about that. So that is one of the reasons they've taken a uh, measured response, not escalating, but mm -hmm. very measured. At the same time, they realize that Trump uh, is what you might call a schoolyard bully. Uh, and when you have a bully, appeasement doesn't work. So what they're doing are things that they believe are in their own economic development interest. So uh, they believe opening up their financial markets at this stage is in their interest. It wasn't in their interest 15 years ago. I don't think the United States government has uh, any deep understanding of China, and that's that's really quite sad. Uh, I don't think they have uh, any person, anybody who's been engaged with China, uh, not China bashing. I mean, they have somebody who's engaged in China bashing. You're referring to Peter Navarro. That, exactly, but somebody who's who's really been engaged in talking to China over the. 30, 40 years of its development process and, and seeing how they've uh, been evolving, both economically and politically. At your local equity markets, hi, I'm Nikki, and stock of the day is Agrotech Foods. Uh, Paranjul-led equity fund has, uh, equity intelligence fund has bought in 0.6% stake in the counter for a sum of around 10 odd crore. Uh, approximately one and a half lakh shares have been bought at a price of 650 each. Uh, notably also, Junjunwala has upped the stake in the counter as per the March shareholding pattern, pattern by as much as 0.4% uh, as compared to that of December quarter. Uh, the shareholding now, along with the family for Junjunwala, Wala stands at 7.9% as per the March shareholding as compared to 7.5, uh, 7.05 that we've seen in the December quarter. Let's look at the shareholding pattern uh, over the past some time. If you look at the latest one, however, the promoter shareholding remained consistent over 51%, while the public shareholding has gone up a tad by 48 uh, to 48%. If you look at the financials of the company, a uh, fairly decent picture there. If you look at uh, the March for the full year ended and the nine-month comparison, uh, Sales have been done to the tune of uh, 600 odd crore as compared to 800 that we've seen in uh, the full year. Also, margins are currently standing at 8.37% as compared to 7.85% that we've seen in the previous year. This is for nine month ended, uh, latest financial that we're talking about. Also, in terms of profitability, the company so far has done a profit of 24 crore for the nine month ended uh, as compared to 29 crore that we've seen in the previous year. Uh, however, the stock performance has not been that un encouraging for this counter. If you look at the one-year performance, 20% uh, return is what we're looking at. YTD performance has declined. Uh, the stock has declined by as much as 3.5%. And for a monthly basis, it's, it's a good run as, uh, as much as 8%. Uh, the key highlights of the company that I'd like to mention is a debt free power company that we're talking about. Uh, the management is pretty much confident of sustaining the 9% growth it has achieved. Also, it is planning to add another 3,000 distributors in the longer term as compared to 890 uh, currently, which means that it will embark upon uh, also, uh, it's embarking upon a highly aggressive CAPEX plan, which currently is uh, earmarked to the tune of 13 to 14 crore each.
Let's get your check on the commodities and currency space, uh, starting off with the base metals, which have seen some bit of traction continue for themselves. Uh, so the base metal index, in fact, uh, snapped its three-day winning streak and ended lower. All base metals except aluminium declined overnight, and aluminium, in fact, is now headed for the best week uh, in about uh, three decades. It has surged nearly 14% this week. Now, uh, backed by these sanctions, uh, aluminium inventory has surged as traders have rushed to deliver the Rusal metal. Uh, in terms of the other base metals that we got, zinc fell to a four-month low and was down nearly 5%, uh, while lead declined over 3%. Now, uh, copper and nickel also fell over 1% each. Now, if you look at the Shanghai Futures Exchange, we are getting similar cues, except for uh, aluminium and steel, which have started on a positive note. Uh, in fact, Shanghai Zinc is down over 1.5% now. Uh, shifting focus to the uh, precious metals, gold actually posted its biggest loss in about two weeks as the angst is uh, Now, gold declined 1% and is now trading below the 1340 mark. As far as oil prices are concerned, uh, overnight oil prices did uh, actually manage to hit a three-year high on Middle East uh, risk and the OPEC compliance. So OPEC's uh, supply cut compliance reached a record for the fifth straight month. Uh, also, OPEC said that its output has now fallen to a lowest level in the last one year. Uh, now, but uh, let's shift focus to the currency space. Uh, Saloni, I believe uh, the dollar has uh, been gaining strength. What other cues are you picking up? So do talking of dollar index, uh, it ended uh in uh, positive territory yesterday and it ended at two tenth of a percent higher uh, against major of its uh, peers or uh, as yields treasury yields climbed as risk appetite improved in global markets well speaking of back home indian rupee uh, it rebounded from its uh, five month low yesterday and ended little changed at 65.26 levels against the dollar now remember the domestic currency did turn volatile during the day and it touched the 65.4 mark uh, in today its lowest levels since uh, November 14. Well, elsewhere, improving economic data like uh, uh, increasing industrial production as well as easing inflation is likely to support rupee in today's trade. Well, speaking of bond market, sovereign bonds gained in trade yesterday after declining for last three consecutive sessions as yield on a benchmark security dropped nearly 7 basis point to 7.47%. Now, in terms of flows into debt market, global funds increased their rupee debt holdings yesterday uh, in the tune of 200 crore according to NSD data and on the global front euro slipped in trade uh, yesterday against the dollar after European Central Bank policy makers hinted that they may soon end their massive bond buying program and elsewhere uh, the greenback uh, got weaker against the pound that it extended its rally for the fifth consecutive session now it was the best performing currency yesterday and it is trading near two week high against the dollar and lastly speaking of dollar rupee now it is trading at 65.30 levels against the dollar which indicates a flat to negative opening for indian rupee in today's trade well, among the stocks that we are tracking uh, includes reliance industrial infra now this company reported its fourth quarter earnings after market hours yesterday um, and, and no uh, excitement as far as the numbers are concerned revenues fell by about one percent the net profit dropped by a big 66 percent even on the operational front ebita uh, declined by 16 percent and margins took a knock of nearly 300 basis points uh, that apart you have hcl technologies which has partnered with sumeru equity uh, to buy a us based is cloud services company Actin Corporation and that is going to be an all cash deal worth 330 million dollars. HCL Technologies will hold about 80% uh, and Sumeru another 20% in the JV that they will set up to make this acquisition. So that's HCL Technologies, watch out for that name. Uh, you also have some updates that Tyson Krupp has uh, shared with respect to its planned a JV with Tata Steel on which they have said that the decision will come through in the first half of the year and that the due diligence is almost complete. Uh, that's a Bloomberg News report. You also have Boeing uh, which has said they will partner with um, Hindustan Aeronautics and Mahindra Defence Systems and that will be to make uh, fighter jets in India. So watch out for Hinduna, uh, Hindustan Aeronautics. That a part of French defence manufacturer Next uh, has said that they are uh, you know, jointly going to be manufacturing uh, certain um, or BMCS chart systems along with Premier Explosives. That's again according to Bloomberg. So watch out for Premier Explosives. You might see a, a sharp reaction on that small counter. Tex Maco Rail is another one. Now they've made their foray into South Africa uh, and they've said that um, they will grow their exports and EPC business in that region. We're also tracking two other stocks in the back of bulk deals. Uh, quality where Letco, Bruso, EM, 
equity fund has bought 1.5% stake in a bulk deal yesterday and this is in addition to the 1.7% stake they bought on Wednesday so upping their stake and then you also have a smaller company called MMP Industries where Kenneth Andrade's uh, Old Bridge Capital has bought 2.14 lakh shares at an average price of 192 so watch out for all these names. Okay, onto the big story. It's a three-way race uh, for Fortis because the heroes as well as Burmans have thrown in their hat into the ring. What does this mean? Uh, so the news came in overnight. First of all, the uh, hero enterprises and Burman family uh, together as investors have put in an unsolicited uh, binding offer for uh, Fortis Healthcare. What they plan to do is invest uh, 1,250 crores into Fortis Healthcare. Now, how will this be entire thing be funded? 500 crores is a two-part funding. 500 crores will be immediately infused uh, into Fortis Healthcare and they need three weeks of due diligence post which another 750 crores will be put in. Now the pricing that they have said is that 156 per share or if the SEBI approved formula is much higher, they will take the higher of the two. So 156 is the base at which they are valuing Fortis Healthcare. Now in terms of what the history is, currently uh, as investors they own 3% stake in the company. In the past also they have tried to infuse fund via preferential allotment but that has always failed uh, so there are almost two or three attempts which happened that didn't uh, go well with uh, this now why are they bidding first of all they're saying that you know external funding is clearly needed they as shareholders are concerned with what exactly is happening with the financial position of Fortis now what are they saying is that you know uh, if this entire deal goes through uh, this deal will make them the largest shareholder in uh, Fortis because Fortis currently has no promoter the largest entity is yes bank currently which owns anywhere between uh, 15 to 16 percent so this will go in uh, much higher than that now in terms of uh, what's on offer 500 crores that they're given up front there'll be no questions asked but that will be only used to play pay back the employee dues as well as uh, you know uh, as well as uh, settle any debt that is there currently and in return they're asking for one board seat uh, in in the Fortis healthcare as of now the other factor that they're saying is why uh, they are appealing to investors they should be considered they're saying they have a strong background of running enterprises because heroes run uh, Munjal's run the hero group and uh, the Burmans run the Dabur group no structural changes and a quick resolution because Manipal's uh process will take time IHH uh, there's no yet clarity on what exactly is happening so they're saying this is a quick resolution that will be that will happen uh, in terms of improving the financials of the company the other thing is that the long-term growth structure for the company remains the same there's no uh, merger with some other company so basically Fortis will remain as it is and fund infusion will come in just a quick uh, you know uh, uh, valuation uh, uh, snapshot of what has happened so pretty much everyone's bid on the same line Manipal health update to 156 per share IHH according to Bloomberg has bid in 160 per share and the Hero Burman combined is at 156 per share that's a minimum could go in even higher but just one point the difference is uh, these two are looking at, at an acquisition or taking over the company while Hero Burman combined is basically fund infusion to up their stake in the company process has started and we um, just received it so we are in the middle of analyzing and reading and uh, really looking forward to respond to the Indian Air Force. Uh, you will be uh, partnering with uh, an Indian partner Adani in this right? Yes, we, uh, as we said before here, we, uh, we are looking at building a partnership with uh, Adani, and, but of course we also need to look at the, uh, the overall requirements and how the SP process is evolving. So uh, currently we are, we are looking forward to the process and we will monitor how that is going along. Uh, you know, you're part of the last uh, MMRCA project as well, where you uh, bid as well. Uh, how do you see this process being different from the last one? Uh, again, it's just an RFI, uh, so we we don't know that. So, um, but of course, we've read the uh, Chapter Seven of the uh, DDP and the SP and so on. So, if we assume that they're going to go ahead with the SP process, it's going to be a different process because the MMRCA was different. Uh, that was more of a uh, by global with the uh, uh, directed TOT to uh, um, DPSU being HR. Mm -hmm. And uh, but again. The RFI doesn't clearly give us all those answers. So we, we are looking forward to the next step and looking forward to uh, the progress of, of defining exactly what the, uh, the, the end process will be. 
Now we had the Prime Minister today talking about this project as well, saying that you know we wouldn't be taking 10 years uh, like the previous government took. Uh, it would be a shorter process of shortlisting and taking forward. Are you optimistic with the kind of uh, progress uh, that you're seeing on the RFI front and then uh, the feedback which you're getting from your counterparts uh, or the, the ministry uh, official? Yes, I mean, I'm very well aware of, uh, we are uh, aware of the fact that uh, uh, there's a strong need from the Indian Air Force. They need numbers, they need fighters in the air, and I think we can provide the best solution with the superior availability and technology that we are offering with the Group E. The Air Force will definitely have fighters in the air where they belong. Um, and I'm encouraged by the Honorable Prime Minister's statement saying that he's going to go ahead and they're going to push now for the procurement of the 110 fighters. So yes, I would say I, I'm really encouraged by that statement. Well, the fourth quarterly numbers for Infosys isn't going to be as much about the result as much as it's going to be about the outlook. And, uh, you know, but let me just start off with what we're expecting with respect to, uh, you know, your expectations. Well, we can expect about uh, one. 0.9% increase in both the dollar revenues as well as the total income and um, moving in what we're also expecting is about well an expansion in EBIT margins by as much as nearly uh, you know 190 basis points at around 24.4 uh, uh, moving in profits could see a decline on a sequential basis by as much as 28% but this is largely on account of some tax reversed uh, in the last quarter and on optical basis you know this may look like a decline however we're also expecting an uptick on an adjusted basis when it comes to profitability that said among the most important factors we'll be watching out for is of course the guidance the outlook for FY19 and a Bloomberg poll suggests that we could expect anywhere between 5% to 8.5% uh, revenue growth in constant currency terms for FY19 and uh, of course uh, with respect to margins we're expecting the the company to project around 23 to 25 percent range. Uh, moving in, the second and the, perhaps the more important factor will be Salil Parekh taking over and him telling us about the strategy that he intends to uh, use and you know for Infosys and take Infosys forward. And finally, of course, how we are expecting the different verticals to pan out in the commentary. While we are expecting the banking and financial uh, you know, vertical to start seeing some amount of traction, we could see, expect some subdued uh, you know, cues coming in from the retail or the manufacturing space. Uh, that said, uh, like I said, the most important uh, factors will be about the outlook and not necessarily about the numbers. We're expecting a tepid uh, quarter otherwise as far as emphasis is concerned. Staying with the IT space, uh, plenty of buying and selling happened uh, in the uh, other IT counters, starting off uh, with the TCS. Now that counter was up about 4.5% uh, in trade and saw delivery buying in excess of 750 crores. The delivery volume shot up 130% at nearly 25 lakh shares as compared to its 5-day average and the total volume surged 166% at nearly 40 lakh shares as compared to its 5-day average. The second stock also from the IT space, HCL Technologies, now that was also up 4.5% uh, four, four in trade and saw delivery buying of nearly 200 crores. The delivery volume uh, just about doubled at nearly 20 lakh shares as compared to 5-day average and the total volume shot up more, uh, more than 100% at about 42 lakh shares as compared to its 5-day average. Last and final stock, uh, Rain Industries, uh, now that was down about 4% uh, in trade and saw delivery selling in excess of 60 crores. The delivery volume just about doubled at nearly 18 lakh shares as compared to its 5-day average and the total volume shot up 70 at about 38 lakh shares as compared to its 5-day average. हमारा बहुत ही विश्वस्त भागीदार रहा खासकर सुरक्षा के क्षेत्र में हम भारतीय रूस के प्रति बहुत ही कृतज्ञ हैं
the relationship between India and the United States has never been stronger, has never been better. Well, fourth quarter earnings kick off in earnest today, so you can stay tuned to Bloomberg Quint over the course of the day for all the updates there and, of course, the live market action. You'll also find several stories on the website. Here are just a couple of them. The government has appointed Bhanu Pratap Sharma as the chairman of the bank's board bureau. Financial Services Secretary Rajiv Kumar said on Twitter. Hindustan Unilever Chief Executive Officer Sanjeev Mehta will take over from Harish uh, Manwani as the new chairman. Manwani has decided to retire as a chairman and not seek reappointment at the forthcoming shareholders meeting in June. Well, that's all you need to know going into trade this Friday. Uh, but up next is Indian Open and that will take you through market open. Thanks so much for watching. This is Bloomberg Quint.